This is Adventist World Radio broadcasting in English from Pune. Hello and a warm welcome to you as you join us. In our program today, we have music from Pilgrims and Esther Cynthia, followed by a nature study on salamanders. Ending our program with message from God's word on the topic, the controversy between God and Satan. This is your host Sharad and I'm Maureen and you are listening to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. Let's begin our program with a song He's Always There by Pilgrims. listening to Adventist World Radio the voice of hope from Pune India and now here's a nature study brought to you by Tina on salamanders dear friend i'm glad to share a nature study on salamanders salamanders are little lizard like creatures that have short legs and a long tail they walk or run like a lizard but they are not lizards They belong to the frog and toad class. Most of these little creatures are quite small, 3 to 4 inches in length. They are more abundant in the United States than any other country in the world. But the largest salamander is found in Japan and is about 5 feet long. The most well-known salamander is the spotted salamander in the United States. 
which grows to about 6 inches long. Being cold-blooded amphibians, salamanders adapt to the climate around them. They cannot live in a climate that is too severely cold. They spend most of their daylight hours under the moist logs, rocks, bark and leaves. Most salamanders are land creatures. However, there are a few varieties that are water creatures. Some of the water ones are water bound. They never leave the water. One variety lives on the bottom of the streams and ponds. There are also some salamanders that never leave the egg until they are mature. Then they venture out. Others hatch and grow to maturity. The salamanders have been created by God in such a way that if they lose a tail or a foot, they can grow another one. I wish that this were possible in humans, don't you? I wish that some of my friends who have lost an arm, hand, leg or foot could grow another one. But God never put that ability in humans. I believe that the creature that I saw most in summer camps during the time I was a camp director were salamanders. Boys and girls seemed to enjoy bringing the little creatures back in their hands. They had found them as they rolled over rocks and rotten trees and lifted up leaves and other debris. So dear listener, God is in a secret place. One of these days he will come back and take us home with him to his secret place. Ask him today to help you to be ready to go with him home today. Thank you Tina for sharing a nature study on salamanders. The Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 19 verses 1 to 4 we are told about the story where David is persecuted by Saul. Friends, shall we read from the verse 1? Saul told his son Jonathan and all his officials that he planned to kill David but Jonathan was very fond of David and so he said to him my father is trying to kill you please be careful tomorrow morning hide in some secret place and stay there i will go and stand by my father in the field where you are hiding i will speak to him about you If I find out anything, I will let you know. We find David was miraculously saved so many times. To know more on God's word, you are invited to write to us. Here's our mailing address. Adventist World Radio, Post Box No. 17, Pune 411-001, Maharashtra, India. You could also email us on Adventist Media Center at gmail dot com. Before you hear a song, since our Bible theme today is the great controversy between Christ and Satan, let's put a question front of us: Shouldn't those who believe in Jesus Christ be freed from conflicts? Let's refer to the Scriptures. Maureen, can you read? Psalms 27 verses 1 to 3 Sure it says the Lord is my light and my salvation so why should i be afraid the lord protects me from danger so why should i tremble when evil people come to destroy me when my enemies and foes attack me they will stumble and fall though a mighty army surrounds me my heart will know no fear Even if they attack me I remain confident dear listener evil is inevitable because we live in a fallen world filled with broken people we will find ourselves in many types of conflicts our focus should not be on the dark forces that attack us but on the lord who defends us here's a song entitled as i walk through the path of life by esther cynthia We all have had experiences of keen disappointment and utter discouragement. Days when sorrow is the portion and troubles harass the soul and we tend to lose our hold on God. And during these times, Satan takes advantage and seeks to shake our confidence and tempts us to distrust God, to question his love and break our hold on God. But Jesus the greatest burden bearer invites, "Come unto me." He desires to soothe our frayed nerves 
and ease our restless longings. True rest is found in a loving trust relationship with our Creator. Down through the centuries of time, His gentle invitation remains the same. His love and compassion never weary. In every circumstance, we may find assurance and support in the unfailing love and power of a covenant-keeping God. If He could do that for me, I'm sure He's more than willing and able to do it for you too. invite you to hear God's word. Dear listener, our topic today is the great controversy between God and Satan. The Bible gives us 
a particular kind of world view, a remarkable meta narrative that pulls back the curtain between heaven and earth. Here are given the reasons for the sinful mess that this world is in. Further, we are given the only solution in all the universe whereby people can understand the chaotic world of this disease, violence, disaster and death in which we live. We call this biblical drama the great controversy between God and Satan. Ellen White has given one of the clearest exposition of this biblical theme. Throughout her ministry of 70 years in spoken and written words, she has outlined in simple terms how sin developed, how the minds and bodies of men and women have been affected, and now God has entered the picture to provide relief and hope for a future without sin and suffering. We have a key issue that Ellen White highlights how the controversy erupted when Lucifer, God's chief angel, became dissatisfied with what he thought was the arbitrary way God was running the universe. His personal dissatisfaction led to another angel's sharing his baseless challenges to God's authority. And as Revelation 12, chapter 7 to 9 tells us, war broke out in heaven and the rebels were cast out, ending upon this planet. This rebellion eventually became a universe-wide concern because God, the Creator, was charged with being unfair, severe, and unforgiving. The enemy of good blinded the minds of men so that they looked upon God with fear. They thought of him as severe and unforgiving. Satan led men to conceive of God as a being whose chief attribute is stern justice, one who is a severe judge, a harsh exacting creditor. It was to remove this dark shadow by revealing to the world the infinite love of God. That Jesus came to live among men, beyond the angels in heaven and human beings on earth. God knew that Satan's charges had to be answered and his government vindicated. God, the one infinite and all-wise, sees the end from the beginning and in dealing with evil, his plans were far-reaching, the comprehensive. It was his purpose not merely to put down the rebellion, but to demonstrate to all the universe the nature of the rebellion. God's plan was unfolding, showing both his justice and his mercy, and fully vindicating his wisdom and righteousness in his dealings with evil. How could a fair loving and gracious God unfold a plan so that the universe could be forever settled regarding his character. He did so by letting Satan have the opportunity to fully unfold his way of running the universe. In the great controversy between good and evil, Satan must be given every opportunity to develop his true character, that the heavenly universe and the race for whom Christ was giving his life might see the righteousness of God's purposes. Those under the control of enemy must be allowed to reveal the principles of his government. The great rescue is coming ahead of us, dear listener. So the big questions are, how does God plan to reverse the damage that rebellion has done to this earth and its inhabitants? How could he convince humanity that he has been completely fair in handling Satan's rebellion. Listen to this, dear listener. By his life on earth, he honored the law of God. By his death, he established it. He gave his life as a sacrifice not to destroy God's law, not to create a lower standard, but that justice might be maintained. 
that the law might be shown to be immeasurable. Satan had claimed that it was impossible for man to obey God's commandments, and in our own strength, it is true that we cannot obey them. But when Christ came in the form of humanity and by his perfect obedience, he proved that humanity and divinity combined can obey every one of God's precepts. Jesus lived and died not only to demonstrate God's fairness, he also provided a way for men and women to be forgiven and restored, defeating Satan in his own lives through the drama we call atonement, restoration from the ranks of Satan to the family of God. The atonement of Christ is not a mere skillful way to have our sins pardoned. It is a divine remedy for the cure of transgression and the restoration of spiritual health. It is the heaven-ordained means by which the righteousness of Christ may be not only upon us but in our hearts and characters. Dear listener, the key word on which each person's salvation depends is faith. Our response to grace, faith is more than intellectual belief or assent to truth. To have faith means to find and accept the gospel treasure with all the obligations which it imposes. Dear listener, we have God's word as God's final word. God will ultimately do away with all sin on earth, including removing sin from the hearts of those who believe in him. Becoming righteous by faith is the process and the goal of all who are loyal to God. The law requires righteousness, a righteous life, a perfect character, and this man has not to give. He cannot meet the claims of God's holy law, but Christ coming to the earth as man, lived a holy life and developed a perfect character. These he offers as a free gift to all who receive them. His life stands for the life of men. More than this, Christ imbues men with the attributes of God. He builds up the human character after the similitude of the divine character, a goodly fabric of spiritual strength and beauty. Thus, the very righteousness of the law is fulfilled in the believer in Christ. The sanctuary service in both the Old and New Testament teaches the fundamental purposes in God's plan to rescue men and women from sin. The intercession of Christ in man's behalf in the sanctuary above is an essential to the plan of salvation as was his death upon the cross. By his death he began the work which after his resurrection he ascended to complete in heaven. Dear listener, our daily lives are determining our destiny. The traits of character you cherish in life will not be changed by death or by the resurrection. You will come up from the grave with the same disposition you manifested in your home and in society. Our daily lives are determining our destiny. Defects of character must be repented of and overcome through the grace of Christ. An asymmetrical character must be formed while in this probationary state that we may be fitted for the mansions above. Dear listener, Satan would like to keep our world and that includes each of us in the state of sin and sadness forever. But soon God will completely eradicate all suffering. When Jesus comes, the great controversy between Christ and Satan will be forever decided, annihilated. It is the privilege of every Christian to cast out vote today on God's winning side. So dear listener, may God bless you as you cast out today on God's winning side. Let's pray. Our loving Father, we thank Thee for letting us know the plans You have laid up for each one of us. We thank Thee for making provision to save humanity with Your love and eradicating sin forever from this earth. 
strengthen us through thy holy spirit so that we can ought for you in jesus name we ask amen with this we have almost come to the end of our broadcast you are listening to adventist world radio the voice of hope from pune india there are difficult conflicts that you may come across and to learn how to solve them keep listening to adventist world radio trust you enjoyed our program to learn more you could write to us on adventist world radio post box number 17 Pune for one one zero zero one Maharashtra, India. You can also visit our website awr dot org slash English program. You could also email us on Adventist Media Center at gmail dot com. This is Maureen, and I'm your host Sharad, signing off from Adventist World Radio. Do join us again along with your family and friends until we meet via our radio program. Take care. Goodbye and God bless you. As I walk through the path of life, I stumble and I fell. Jesus, my master reached out. Once a stranger, now he's my friend.